Hello, my lovelies. It feels like so long since I journaled with you and I am so glad to be here. Today I am working in my mixed media art journal. It's a B6 that I got from Brie at Documented Journey. I have sketched out this little uh, flowers in a teacup kind of thing I've got going on. It's basically based, I, some of you will know, I just came back from holiday where I was in England and I was there for midsummer. And so I was really, really inspired by the wildflowers and the herbs and the things that I saw there, the botanicals that were there. And, um, and I love midsummer, just the spirit of midsummer. I love it so much. So this is inspired by what I am actually drinking right now. If you can see that teacup in the corner of the screen, it's a little drink of, it's a little tea made out of honeysuckle and eye bright and elderflower. So that's what I have drawn in this teacup right now. So it's, I'm gonna do a mixed media page. I'm using a bit of watercolor, which I've used for the background, and I am also using a bit of acrylic. As you can see there, I've got a bit of Jane Dav, I've got a bit of golden acrylics in white, and I've chucked in a bit of this gel gloss medium to see if I can get some texture in there. So I'm mixing the white and the gel gloss medium. See if I can get it to be nice and thick. Although the flowers are only small, I want them to kind of just jump out of the page a little bit. So it, it seems to be working, it seems to be working. Um, yeah, not too much, it's kind of subtle, but hey, you gotta give it a go, you gotta have a play, right? I'm mixing it with a bit of Jane Davenport's pink there. Now, I have to be honest, I am drawing honeysuckles and eyebright and, uh, and elderflower. Now, these three flowers, these little tiny gorgeous little flowers are actually white. They're white, which for today's mixed media page didn't really excite me that much, just painting white flowers. So here is my hot creative tip for today. Who cares what color the flowers are supposed to be? It's your journal, it's your art, you make them whatever color you wanna make them. And today, the honeysuckles are gonna be with touches of pink, and the eye bright is gonna have touches of purple, and the elderflower is going to have touches of yellow, because I say so. And we're allowed to do that. Right, so I'm working on the greens. I, wanted, I want subtle colors in this picture. So I've mixed up my acrylics, I've taken some um, Viridian green, mixed it with a bit of brown, mixed it with a bit of white and got it to this lovely sagey kind of color. Oh, it's beautiful. And again, I'm, I'm doing that the whole way through. All of my colors, like this is a Hansa yellow, mixing it with white just to kind of neutral, neutral it out and just make it a bit more delicate, I suppose. That's what I'm trying to do. So yes, onto the eye bright. Uh, I have a real, I, I, I see how I pulled out all those paint brushes because I just, I don't know which paint brush to use. I don't have the right acrylic brush for detail. I think I need to go shopping. Oh, shopping. What a shame. Anyway, so I need to go shopping. I need to, I need to purchase some acrylic brushes. Does anyone have any recommendations for a good acrylic brush for detail? Because I'm, I'm using this smudgy brush, which is actually a watercolor brush, but I never use it for watercolor, but it's actually called a smush a smusher, <laughs> which is a great name for a brush. But I guess I don't really smush very much with watercolor because I never use it. So it's officially an acrylic paintbrush now, anyway. Um, yeah, and I, and I love to add that extra bit of white so it, it's, it's got that kind of, that gleam to it. Uh, I want these leaves to be a different color to the other leaves, so I'm adding some yellow in to the mix, just to give it a nice, fresh, bright green feel, a young, young feel. All right, and on to the elderflower, which I'll do with yellow and lots of white mixed in. Oh, the wildflowers. Do you know, guys, I live in the tropics. I live in the rainforest. There is no shortage of beauty and green in the natural world around me here. But having said that, there is absolutely nothing like the beautiful, delicate wildflowers that you find in England or in Europe in the summer. I just, it's just to die for that. The sort of, you know, the delicacy of them and the great swathes of them across the countryside. Oh my goodness, you know what? There is nothing like the English countryside when the sun is shining in the middle of the summer and the sky is blue and the breeze is cool. It is so special, so spectacular. 
and um, I just, I can't get enough of it. While we were on holiday, there was just buttercups everywhere and foxgloves everywhere and oh, it was just magic, just magic. And I guess this is what I'm, you know, this is what I've been inspired by and this is what I'm imparting a little bit onto this page. So now I'm on to painting the teacup and I'm back to watercolor because I want it to have that delicate china feel to the cup. I think I'm using a cerulean blue here mixed with a little bit of green and a little bit of buff titanium again to kind of make it neutral and gentle. I'm using it on the saucer as well but I don't like it on the saucer so I'm gonna kind of make that buff titanium I think which I actually quite like. I'm using it more and more these days buff titanium. So sorry about the light that's starting to stream through the window guys it's kind of making harsh lights on the table I hope that you can still see the page it's the afternoon light streaming through the window in my studio it's so so beautiful but it can come up a bit harsh on the camera oh and I also know there are no guarantees that the sun is going to shine in an English summertime <laughs> so I count myself very very lucky very blessed to have experienced it and this is potter's pink, the same color that I've used for the background, except with the background, I mixed it with lots of white uh, to soften it up. And potter's pink on the inside as well of this cup here. Potter's pink by Daniel Smith is such a beautiful color. Really, really versatile. I absolutely love it. Good for faces, good for teacups, good for flowers. Oh, good for so many things. I really, really, really dig it. I love the idea that when we draw things, they don't have to look how they're supposed to look. I love that. I, f I feel like I'm more interested in seeing things that are drawn in a way that shows how they make me feel rather than them looking perfect. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? I just, I want to see how it feels rather than it being exactly how it's supposed to look because that can be quite boring for me. I have kind of a love-hate relationship with botanicals, you know. I, I love them, but I do, I, is it just me or are they actually kind of hard to draw, you know? And I feel like I'm, so, like, I, I'm, I'm coming to, you know what it is? It's about finding your style. And I've realized that my style in botanicals is to be really loose and free with it and not to be concerned about things looking the way they're supposed to look because I get bored. I try to draw things the way they're supposed to look and then I have to, it takes a long time and it, it feels very laborious and I, and I don't enjoy myself. And if I'm not feeling the joy, then the work doesn't appear joyful. And then the whole thing is just not fun for me. So I've realized that with botanicals, I have to be kind of loose and, and not worry about things being the exact size and the exact shape and the exact way that they actually look or even the color for that matter. It's like you've just got to give yourself permission to let go of your preconceived notions of how things are supposed to look. Easy, right? Absolutely all the neighborhood kids are playing in my garden right now. <laughs> it's the very last day of the school holidays, people. Yes! Anyway, so the kids are in the garden and they're like running around and screaming and squealing. So I hope that it's not too loud on the video because <laughs> they are loud. Of course, this is my Prismacolor pencil in dark umber. I do all my shadows in dark umber. I just love it. It's like no matter what color you paint things and how bright and how colorful you go, a little bit of dark umber just brings everything back down to earth again, gives it a sense of um, dimension and realness to it. And I just, I love that. I love that. Good old dark umber. I think I put it in absolutely everything. Okay, and so now I'm going to hit this teacup with some shadow, that's my pit pen, and then smudge it with my big old smudger. One of my favorite things to do. It's very effective and a lot of fun. And time for the font. Ooh, I'm so into font at the moment, you guys. And I just, you know, this whole thing's opened up for me that font is so much more than like brush script. You know, because we always tend to fall back on script, like calligraphy, brush script, because it's so popular. It's been so popular. And and I, you know, like I totally dig that. It should be popular. The return of handwriting and the return of brush script font is a beautiful, beautiful thing that I'm grateful for in the world. Having said that, I am rubbish at it. And, and that kind of left me feeling a bit, I don't know. 
a bit blocked, a bit stumped, but I've also realized that there is so much more to font than just script. Like you can do so much with your simple round brush and some watercolor and, you know, explore different, different kinds of fonts. Like I, I, it's just something I'm really geeking out about at the moment and looking forward to spending a lot more time exploring, uh, creating different sorts of fonts with my brush, creating different sorts of fonts with my brush. So you guys, this piece of work, if you like it, if you're inspired by it, it's available to purchase in my Etsy store as a download. You can download it and print it out in small or in large, it's up to you. Um, you get them all included in the one download and um, you can put it in your journal or put it on your wall. I have had a super fun time making this and sharing it with you guys. Thank you so very much for watching. I will see you very soon. Bye.